Okay, is everyone ready? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So we're continuing on volume 19, 718, 1926. So Jesus is telling Louisa why, um, he just explained to Louisa why uh, he didn't give the divine will when he came upon earth. So this is where we are. My daughter, see then the necessity for me not to give the kingdom of my divine will and not to make it known when I came upon earth. It's why, what's the reason? Because I, God, wanted to test the creature once again. So the test has been being faithful to the Catholic Church, obedient to the Catholic Church. That, that was the test. So Adam was unfaithful to, the, to God and disobedient to God. And, and what he has to see in us is faithfulness and obedience. And this is why we're being tested today. We're being tested because he, he wants to give this to those who can pass that test. I, I know a number of people, uh, they don't want uh, to follow the church's teaching. And that's a sad thing for them. It's because Jesus says this, why I wanted to test the creature was I wanted to give the, the creature, that's us, things inferior. I, I wanted to give things, her things inferior to those that I gave uh, in creation. I wanted to give her things inferior to those that I gave in creation. So right now, Adam didn't die. Adam could, could have lived forever. I mean, he is living spiritually forever, but the body wasn't to die. The body wasn't to get sick. The body uh, wasn't to be disobedient. It was to be faithful to God. So he says, remedies and goods to heal her. So God gives us the sacraments and sacramentals to heal us. So when we go to confession, I mean, I've seen people going to confession uh, and healed. I mean, physically healed. Uh, because of sin that weighs them down, um, and when they were sorry for their sins, God healed them. I mean, I saw it physically, you could see uh, their bodies were changing. The same thing with those who could not forgive. All right, you know, a lot of people come in to talk about things and they're, they're like oppressed. It's like they're carrying in a dead person on their back. And then they, while they're talking, they throw this dead person on the ground. And they did this, and they did that, and this is what they did. And, and Jesus' response to them is, you have to forgive them. And when I say that, you have to forgive, they say, no way. I will never forgive them. They put the dead body back on their back, and they walk out oppressed. See, we have to forgive. You can't hold grudges. Uh, you, this is the faithfulness that God is looking for. What did we learn from Jesus on earth? What, what are we following in his Gospels? But he, Jesus says, uh, uh, Adam, he says, in fact, when I created Adam, he was not ill, he was healthy, he was holy. Therefore, he could very well live in the kingdom of my divine will. But as he withdrew from the supreme volition, when he says, I, basically, the echo of Lucifer, I will not serve, I will not obey, he fell ill. And I, Jesus, came upon earth as the celestial doctor to see whether he would accept the remedies, the medicines for his illness. The remedies and medicines are the sacraments and sacramentals. When you're in the state of grace, you're, 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 even if you're dying, and I've seen this with people, they're happy. They're they're. they're holy. He says, I came upon earth as the celestial doctor to see whether he would accept the sacraments, the sacramentals, the medicines for his illness. 
And after this test, I would give him the surprise, and that's where we are today, of manifesting the kingdom of my divine will that I kept in my holy humanity prepared for all of creation, all of humanity. Those who think that our highest goodness and infinite wisdom would have left man with only goods of redemption without raising him up again back to his original state in which he was created by us, triune God, deceive themselves. I hear so many people, I, I, I've talked to them, do you hear anything about the kingdom? Or is it all doom and gloom out there? If it's doom and gloom, you're deceiving yourself. The kingdom is coming. It's not the end of the world. It's world without end. Amen. We've got to remember that. It's the kingdom is coming. We're going to go back to where Adam was before the fall. So when we're faithful and obedient to Christ and his church, good things happen, even when there's tragedies. The decision of giving the kingdom of my divine will to, back to mankind, uh, I have not changed. Man changes. God does not change. Now, things are easier because the goods of redemption have made their way. They have made known many surprises of my love for mankind. How many of us have read the lives of the saints and are happy? I mean, this is one of the problems with a number of people. They love the saints so much that they don't want to give them up. I remember Father uh, Jacques Daly. He would always be on EWTN talking about St. Teresa, talking about St. Catherine of Siena, talking about the great mystics of the church. And you fell in love with St. Teresa. You fell in love with St. Catherine of Siena. I, I, I talked to him about the divine will, I think, in the 90s. And he says, this is good. Louis, Louis is good. This is good. And I was with him, basically, the last conference that he went to. And he sat right next to me. Uh, he was dying, but <laughs> he, did, he, did, he couldn't get up and walk away. He was a prisoner. And we went through the five talks. And at the end of the five talks, he grabbed my arm and he said, Louisa is great, isn't she? Louisa is everything, isn't she? And I said, yes. Finally, <laughs> since 1990, finally he, he realizes it. But thank God he realized it because he, he died living in the divine will. See, the, the thing that Jesus wants is we have been so lied to about everything that the truth is coming. God is going to bring us back to the truth. And the truth is Jesus. The truth is Mary, the new Adam, the new Eve. And now is the time that God has given the grace to humanity because remember what, what oh, we maybe don't remember, but Jesus said to Louisa, uh, when the writings of the, of the Vatican come out, basically the secret archives of the Vatican. When the, when the writings come out, the face of the earth will change, and it's going to change rapidly. Now, the thing that we don't see, and we saw that when we were in Corrado with the new archbishop, is all the places of the world that have prayer groups. It's, it's astonishing. It really is astonishing. People from all over the world, Jesus is, is bringing them in to have them understand what he is about to do. And it's glorious. It's glorious. So this is what he says. He says, these, with these, uh, <laughs> I can't think of the word, uh, 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 sacraments and sacramentals have made known many surprises by love for man. The saints, how I have loved humanity, not by the fiat alone, but by giving him my very life, though my fiat cost me more than my very humanity because the fiat is divine. The fiat is immense. The fiat is eternal. Why? The fiat is, is the new era that we're entering into. The fiat of creation, the fiat of redemption, and now the fiat of sanctification. Cost me more than my very humanity because the fiat is divine. It's not just a word. That's why when, when you begin to write, at the end of everything that you write, say fiat. Get into what Jesus wants us to do. This divine, this immense, this eternal. 
The human is human. The human is limited. It has its beginning in time. However, not knowing in depth what the fiat means, and, and this is where a lot of the confusion happens for people who just come into this. What is this fiat that you're talking about? And what the fiat is, is the life of Jesus. It's the life of Mary. It's the life that Adam lost. And Jesus and Mary bring back to humanity this fiat. What is the fiat? It's divine. It's immense. It's eternal. It's not human, but it's divinely human. It's Jesus. It's Mary. So when we, when we give that fiat, when somebody says, well, it's uh, going to rain today and you're not going to be able to do the procession, it's fiat. Okay? Okay, this, whatever you want, Lord, is if, this is what, if you want us to stay in, in chapel and, uh, and, and adore you in the Blessed Sacrament, uh, and, and honor your mother, fiat. You are in charge, Lord, not us. See, it's always, there's no, what do you mean, I'm, I, I got my new sneakers. I mean, I, it's not about us, it's about what the Lord wants. So Jesus says very clearly, however, not knowing the depth of what the fiat means, not knowing the value of the fiat, not knowing the power of the fiat, not knowing what the fiat can do, so that's where most new people are at this point. Uh, the human mind lets themselves be conquered more by all than I did, Jesus said, that I suffered, Jesus says, in the coming to redeem them. So we're conquered by television. We're conquered by music, radio. We're conquered by um, food. We're conquered by uh, exercise. See, Sunday is the holy day. You have to remember this. Sunday is the Lord's day. We, as children of the divine will, we have to set the example for our family, our families, that, no, we're, we're not going to do, we're not going to make Sunday a Saturday. Sunday is the Lord's day. And when you teach your children early, it stays with them. If it's like they're teenagers now and you're just saying, okay, we're going to stay home, we're not going to go, it's going to be difficult. But the thing is, is this sun, every Sunday is the Lord's day. Okay, then I'm not going to cook, we'll go out to dinner. Well, you're making somebody work for you on Sunday. Do you remember the blue laws when there was no, nothing was open on Sunday? It was the Catholics that changed it. Well, with CYO, I remember the first Sunday, you know, as a, as a child in a Catholic school where the, 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 the pastor said, here's our sports team. We're sitting in the front row. Here's the cheerleaders. Now we're going to go over to the gymnasium and cheer them on to win. That was it. Everything changed after that. Who, who helped bring CYO in? Where did it start? Chicago, number one. Who was working in Chicago? Some very famous uh, communists who said, you know, this is good for the children. Lies. What's good for the children is keep holy the Sabbath. See, we got to, we uh, living in the divine world, Jesus is saying, he's testing us. He's saying, okay, let's go back to the, let's go back to Sunday. Let's go back to the sacraments. Let's go back to the sacramentals. And this is why we have this place here. This, the alleged apparitions. They have to say that. It's, it's like, why can't they approve uh, Garabandel? They said a miracle's coming. They got to wait for the miracle. Why can't they approve uh, Medjugorje? The miracles are coming. You have to wait for the miracles. So they can't say yes because it hasn't happened yet. Now we are living in the time when everything is going to change. We've already seen it in the last three and a half years. More is coming. And it's going to be scary. God's going to win. So what we want is we want to enter into that positive. We, want, we don't want to be negative. 
We don't want, you know, who's the negative one? Again, there's three voices. There's the negative voice, which is the devil. There's the positive voice, which is Jesus. And there's the confused voice, which is ours. Somebody says to me, well, how do I know the will of God? Follow the church's teaching. How do you live in the will of God is what Jesus is teaching us today. It's much different to live in the will of God. Again, volume 1 through volume 10 is how to become a divine mirror of Jesus. Volume 11 through volume 19 is how to live in the divine will through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says, I never said a word to this of, of this to any of the saints, Louisa. You are the first. Because through you, Louisa, the kingdom's coming. And then finally, volume uh, 20 through volume 36, how to uh, uh, receive the divine inheritance of the Father. That means going back to paradise, to perfection. Like I said, every one of us in this room is be going to become God's divine masterpiece if you let him do that to you. What is the divine masterpiece? <laughs> the, what is, okay, what is the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary? We become like her son. Image and likeness. That's her triumph. What did Our Lady say to Father Gobi? The triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary will begin in Mexico City. What happened in Mexico City? In 19, what happened? It's the triumph that was the first group who read all 36 volumes of Louisa, Acuna's group. Do you have to understand, God has everything planned. What did, what did, what did Our Lady say about Father, Father, to Father Gobi about uh, the triumph will begin in Mexico City? Uh, and uh, uh, there was one other thing he said. I can't remember it. But anyways, it happened. <laughs> I'll just take my word for it. Uh, <laughs> No, no, it's, okay, the, what, what, um, what, did, what did Jesus, what did Our Lady say? Okay, let's look at the miracle uh, of, the, of, of Our Lady of good, great success. 400 years ago, she said, on the feast of, uh, 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 it's the um, um, purification of Mary, which is also the feast of the, uh, of Chabernet, the feast of candles, Candlemas Day, the feast of uh, the purification of Mary, the uh, presentation of Jesus. They said, she said, a great event will occur. It will be in, 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 in uh, South America, they don't say Our Lady of the Great Event. They say, Our, no, Our Lady of Good Success. It's Our Lady of the Great Event. What happened on that day? in 1996. The writings came out of the Vatican on that day of presentation, on that day of purification, on that day of Candlemas Day. It's Jesus is the light of the world. It happens. It's already happened. And what, what is coming now is the new and divine way of holiness for all the world. That's the words of Pope James, St. John Paul II, St. Jane. Pope St. John Paul II, the new and divine way of holiness for the world. I was there, I was 30 feet away from him at the canonization of St. Honorable de Francia. And he said this, I said, is he reading? He was just quoting St. Honorable de Francia. Great things are coming. This is, this is an, an amazing time. And if you don't understand it at this point, good. If you understood it right away, there's something wrong. This is so, this is, I remember I went to Father John uh, uh, Brown uh, with, when we first had volume 36 translated. And I said to him, I said, Father, we've got 36 translated. He says, impossible. It's so deep. It's so theological. Impossible. Nobody can do this. And I said, well, here it is. And I handed it to him. And he read it. He read the first page. And he looked at me and he goes, this is really good. Who did this? It's the, it's the person who... The vicar general said to us, uh, this is the best translation so far. So what we have, see, 
The translator is the traitor in, in, in Italy. Why? You, you know, in Spanish and in, in Italian and in French, you can have different words for different meanings, and it means different things. And, and always, if you don't have a good translator, especially for holy things, the evil one gets in and says, it means this. What we have, is, say, say for example, the first translations we had of volume one were, were done by a man who hated his father and the father hated him. And it was harsh. It was difficult to read. That when we, when we got it translated by the new translator, it was one who loved her father and her father loved her. It was beautiful. See, it, it depends who's translating it. And again, it's the same thing about those who are teaching. The teaching has to be from a priest. The priest is ontologically changed. Why do you think that the church says a lay person can't give a homily? It could be a nice talk, but there's nothing that changes the soul. The priest, when the priest is ordained, when the deacons ordained, they have the they have the blessing to 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 preach and change souls. You don't know how many times people have come up to me and have said, "Father, when you said A B C, it changed my life." And I know for a fact I didn't say A B C, but that's what they heard. That that's 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 the ontological change. Jesus is there. And Jesus is speaking to each person. You have to understand, Jesus said, it's good. I, I, I just handed a, a book to the Father Joe of the role of the priest. And, and uh, Jesus says, the priests are going to change the face of the earth. How? By proclaiming the divine will. It's a new beginning for, all, for everyone that's coming. Right now, we hear a lot of homilies that are not very good. They talk about vacations. They talk about other things. Well, the, the, what Jesus is going to do, he's, he says, he says, I'm going to touch the souls as I touch the first apostles so that the kingdom can be established now on, on earth as it is in heaven. So let's go back to that fiat. The fiat is divine. The fiat is immense. The fiat is eternal. And God is bringing you into this. It's God that's doing this. It's not you. Jesus is saying, I have planned this from the beginning. Watch what I'm going to do. While humanity is human, limited, because it has its beginning in time. However, not knowing in, in depth what the fiat means, the fiat's value, the fiat's power, and what the fiat can do, the human mind lets itself be conquered more by all that I did and suffered, uh, conquered more than by all that I did and suffered to redeem them. We, we, are, we are not diving into this infinite ocean of love, which is the fiat. And under my pains, my death, that was my fiat was hidden and gave life to my pains. So now I, I wanted to manifest the kingdom of my divine will when it came upon earth before the goods of redemption could be recognized. And the most part, possessed by creatures, my greatest saints would have been frightened by this gift of the divine will. Think about that. What, what God is giving to us is more than what he gave to the saints. This is, this is so beautiful. As you read, every day when you read, you're, you're being taught. You're, it's, it's like being back 2,000 years ago, sitting on the couch with Jesus, and he's teaching you about the kingdom. This is, this is so amazing. All would have thought Adam, innocent, holy, was unable to live nor perse persevere in this kingdom of endless light, of divine sanctity. How can we do this? That's what Jesus said. If he had given the divine will before Louisa, the, the saints would have said, it's impossible. It's impossible to be like Our Lady. It's impossible to be like Jesus. What does the church say about today? The Feast of the Assumption. The church says, where our lady has gone, we hope to follow. It's, it's our, her glory is our blessing. What she has gone through, God wants to do with us. 
She's mother and queen of heaven and earth. And Jesus says to Louisa, you can have this 30%, 60%, or 100%. What do you want? So he gives this book out basically to all of us, and he says, here's the way and the how. Here's the plan that I have. Do you want to follow it? And when we say yes, he says, read. He doesn't force us. I know a number of people become a stick in the mud. They get to a point in the reading, and they go, I don't understand this. I'm not going to move until I understand it. And that's where they stop. Jesus is saying to us, keep on reading. Three pages down, you'll, you'll, you'll hear exactly what your, what your question. Oh, this is what it means. But you're not a stick in the mud. You just keep on reading. I say to Jesus when I was first reading, Jesus, you're, you're dealing with a pea brain. I don't understand this. And God goes, keep on reading. Okay, I'll keep on reading. And, it's, and it surprises me how perfect he is. He answers every one of our questions. It's, it's just keep on reading. Don't, don't stop. And again, it's going to be difficult. So Jesus says, the saints trembling before uh, the men's goods and sanctity, fully divine and of the kingdom of the supreme fiat, you wanted to draw back and say to me, Jesus, think of some other creature. I am incapable of this. This is what Louisa said. I can't do this. I'm incapable. I, I've only got a, she had a first grade education. I went to one of my priest friends. He has three doctorates in philosophy. And I said, read this, please. What is this? What do you think? And he read, it was in volume 36. He read it and he looked at me and he says, no human wrote this. I said, what do you mean? He says, God speaks like this. Where did you get this? And I said, you know, you're absolutely right. This person didn't write it. Jesus dictated it to her. And he goes, well, that makes sense because humans don't think like this. See, this is the language of heaven that you're going to have to learn. If, if you want to uh, go to Mexico and really understand what's going on, take Spanish. Learn a little bit of something, you know. Um, but Jesus is showing us how to think with his understanding when you read the book of heaven. Don't, don't, don't let it frighten you. I'm incapable of this. That's what we all say. He says, you, Jesus says, you are not so much frightened by the suffering uh, of Jesus. Rather, many times you prayed to me, you incited me to let you suffer. See, she understood mortification. Therefore, more, my, more, my more than paternal goodness acted with you as with a second mother of mine. What does Jesus say? Who is my mother and my brothers? It's the ones who do the will of God. And he says, here, Louisa, you're my second mother. The doing the will of God. From her, uh, Mary, I, I hid my conception in her womb. First I prepared Our Lady and I formed her so as not to frighten her. And when appropriate time came in the very act in which I was to be conceived, I made it known to the Blessed Mother through the angel. And even though at the... At first, Our Lady trembled and was troubled. Immediately, she became serene again because she was used, used to living with God. This is the Blessed Mother. In the midst of this light before my, his sanctity. So I have done with you, Louisa, for many, many years. I hid from you what I wanted to, that I wanted to form the supreme kingdom in you. I prepared you, I formed you, I enclosed myself in you in the depth of your soul in order to form it. And when everything was done, I manifest, manifested the secret to you. What was the secret God gave to Louisa? I spoke to you about your special mission. I asked you in a formal way whether you wanted to accept living in my divine will. This is what Jesus is asking us. Louisa, she's, she's the mother of the second generation of the children of light. And Jesus says to us, I'm going to give you a, 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 I'm going to manifest you a secret that I'm going to give to each and every one of us here, Jesus says. He says uh, uh, about your special mission. You, you are alive at this time to bring, help bring about the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. This is not a saintly job. This is what the saints, the saints weren't to do this. This is what God has given to you. I'm going to ask you in a formal way 
whether you will accept living in my divine will. So at Holy Communion today, say to Jesus, you're asking me, and again, you can accept it or say no. But if you accept it, great things are coming. I, I can just tell you that. There's a special mission that God has for each and every one of us. He says, this is why he's going to, he says, my children of the divine will are going to be my uh, divine uh, perfections. It's going to be, uh, 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 I'm going to produce the greatest of all humanity at this point. It's not, it's not um, that you're going to be better. It's, it's, you're going to be able to see clearly uh, in a way that the saints couldn't. As for example, Moses, David, Elijah never received the body, blood, soul, and the divinity of Christ. Was it because they were bad? No, it wasn't time. But when Jesus came, the saints received the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. We receive the, bo the, the, the body, blo blood, and soul of Jesus Christ when we receive Holy Communion. Are we better than Moses? No, it's time. And now it's time to enter into the divine will. He says, I asked you in a formal way whether you wanted to accept living in my divine will, and even though you trembled and feared, I reassured you, saying to you, why do you trouble yourself? That's what God is going to say to us. When, when things get rough, he's going to say to us, why are you worried? Don't you trust me? God's going to take care of everything. Have you perhaps not lived with me until now in the kingdom of my divine will? Everything in our life has brought us to this day. God has been with us since we've been baptized. He's fully, and yes, we've gone through some terrible things, but those terrible things that we've gone through has helped us come closer to Jesus. Now is the time for a total surrender to Jesus. You're going to see it, and it's beautiful. Have you perhaps not lived with me until now in the kingdom of my divine will? And you, serene again, would make more of a paradise of living in the divine will. I would delight in expanding ever more boundaries of my kingdom within you. See, that's what God does. He keeps on expanding uh, uh, our understanding so that we, he can hold us and we can hold him. You know, at Christmas, you should have a baby Jesus that you can hold. And Jesus says, anyone who kisses him, his cross, he says, basically, I will accept it as you actually kissing me. You, you're not far from Jesus. It's, it's a new beginning that's coming. He says, I would delight in expanding ever more the boundaries of my kingdom because it is established up to what point the creature must take this possession of this kingdom since its boundaries are endless and the creature is incapable of embracing them all because the soul is limited. And Louisa says, my love. Again, we have to begin to talk to Jesus like this. My love my life. Yet my fears have not been completely ceased, and many times I am so frightened that I fear that I might act like a second Adam. And Jesus says, Louisa, my daughter, do not fear. You have more help than Adam did. See, this is going to help us. You have the help of a God, human, a God who is human, and all his works, all his pains as your defense, as your support, as your cortege, and he, that, that Adam did not have. Why do you want to fear? Don't be afraid of this. Rather, be attentive to the sanctity that befits living in the celestial kingdom on earth and your own happiness in the, in, and fortune. Because living in the divine will, one gaze of mine is enough for you. Jesus, gaze in my gazing. Jesus, listen in my listening. Jesus, speak in my speaking. Jesus, beat in my heart beating. Jesus, breathe in my breathing. I want you to be the Lord of everything that I possess. Of all that I am, I want you to be the Lord. One gaze of mine is enough for you. It is enough for you to hear one word, a one of my words alone to comprehend its divine goods. 
While for those who are outside, one can say they understand only that the kingdom by divine will exist. But as for what is inside of it, what it takes to comprehend it, they can just barely understand the alphabet of my divine will. That's where we are. And Jesus is inviting us in. If the kingdom is, is here, and when those doors open, and who has the keys to the kingdom? It's the Pope. And the devil knows that. When the, when the Pope opens those doors, we're going to see this light that we've never seen before. It's not here yet. There's a great event that's coming. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be worried about. There's nothing to be complaining about. There's nothing to be negative about. The kingdom is coming. And God is asking us to get ready to enter into these doors of heaven. It's, it's very, very close. Don't, it's like, it's like, you know, you've heard uh, fake news. Stop listening to the fake news. It, it, it's all lies. It's all lies. And, and, and now you have to understand the pulsation of the television. The pulsation of the te television is a hypnotic pulsation. And that's why in Opus Amptorum and Shalorum, they call it the hypnotic eye of death. If you're 8 or 80 years old, you're paralyzed for hours. How many hours have we wasted? And even, even when Scripture says, look up, your, your, your redemption is near at hand, that's about now. Everybody's looking down at their iPhones. Everybody is. Jesus says, look up, look up. Now, how many yesterday saw the miracle of the sun? Look up. God, God is getting us ready. Volume 19, 7, 26, 26. Now the sun is the image of my divine will. More than the sun in the sky shoots its rays to convert those who want to live. Do you want to live in the kingdom of God? Do you want to enter completely into the light, the love, the life of God? These people, and he's, hopefully he's talking about us, are the image of the four degrees of living in my divine will. One can say that the first one does not live in the kingdom, but only in the light from my kingdom. And the son of my will diffuses to all. To all. One can say that he is outside its boundaries if he enjoys a limited light because it is the nature of light that diffuses everywhere. His nature, his weaknesses, his passions form as though a house around him and they form, they form infected, putrid air and breathing it in, that person lives a sickly life without the liveliness of the strength of doing good. But in spite of all this, he is resigned and he bears his uh, to uh, and he bears to his best encounter the encounters of life because the light of my divine will mild as it may be always brings us good so it's your the first thing is you're in a house with all the windows closed you're you're in the house you you love God but there's darkness the, the now the second is the image who enters the first steps of his boundaries of the kingdom this person now opens the, door, opens the windows. This is what it means to be Catholic. You're, you're with the sacraments and sacramentals. This one enjoys not only more light, but also heat. Therefore, the air he breathes is pure. The air is coming in through the windows. And in breathing it, he feels his passions die within him. He is uh, constant and good. He bears the crosses, not only with resignation, but with love. However, since he is at the first steps of the boundaries, he looks at the earth, he feels the weight of the human nature. Uh, and so, so the window, you're looking outside, but you're not outside. Now the third stage is you go outside. This is the image of one who has advanced the boundaries of the kingdom, and its light is such and so, so great as to make himself forget everything. You're outside, you're not trapped in a house, there's no windows, now you can see everything, 360 degrees. That's the fullness of the Catholic faith. This is why it's so great to be Catholic. And the light is such and so great as to make him forget everything. He no longer feels anything of himself. Good virtues, crosses, change into his own nature. Light escapes him, uh, eclipses him, transforms him, and just barely allows him to look from afar what no longer belongs to him. 
the earth no longer belongs to us. That's what the Catholic faith does. That's why people uh, 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 would, would go to, to the desert. All they wanted was God. The fourth stage is the happiest. Now, what's this fourth stage? He says, listen to this. Because he is the image of the one who not only lives in my kingdom, but acquires it. This one undergoes the total consummation, the fulfillment of the supreme son of my divine will. The eclipse causes by its light is so intense that he himself becomes light and heat. He leaves earth and enters into the sun and participates in the sun. See, that's where Louisa is. Now, when somebody says to me, well, I'm living in the fourth stage, let me get on my knees and adore you. God bless you. You've left the earth. You're now, you become light and heat, one with God. That's going to happen to all of us, but not, not yet. The great event has to take place first. Wait till you see the great event. We're all going to see it. So he becomes light and heat, nor does he look at anything else but light and fire. And all things convert him to, for him into light and love. Therefore, we shall, therefore, there shall be a difference of degrees in the kingdom of my divine will, according to how much the creature shall want to take from its goods. But the first degree shall be spurs and paths in order to reach the last one. For you, then, who must make it known, there is all the necessity to live in the last degree, Louisa. Louisa is the one that possesses this. She's the mother of the second generation of the children of light. That's, that's what Jesus says. She has 2,200 titles. If you want to get a glimpse of Louisa, go to louisapicaretta.me. Go to the titles of Louisa. And then I can guarantee you, after the first hundred that you go through, you go, who is this woman? that God has given so much to and now wants to give it to us. 519, 729, 1926, I was praying my usual rounds, and that's what God is looking for. The rounds are the way Jesus prayed. The rounds are the way Mary prayed. The rounds are the way Adam prayed before the fall. And Jesus is saying, this is how I want to teach you how to pray. The prayer now, we follow the saints. The prayer, you know, St. Gertrude, was Gertrude's prayers, St. Francis's prayers, St. Claire's prayers, they're beautiful. Louisa taught Louisa how to pray the rounds that Jesus prayed, that Mary prayed. What did they do for those 30 years of silence that we know nothing about? It was praying the rounds. And as you begin to pray the rounds, everything's going to come alive. See, every leaf on a tree is an I love you. Every blade of grass is an I love you. Every drop of water is an I love you. And when you get into the divine will, you're, you hear, you smell, you taste, you touch all the I love you's around you. And you breathe them in because this is God's I love you. And with Jesus, through Jesus, for Jesus, you give back to the Father this divine I love you. It's Jesus in you that's doing it. Again, you're, he, as soon as you say yes to the divine will, his throne is your heart. Everything else around your heart is being going to be thrown out. Thrown out. The world, the flesh, and the devil is going to be thrown out. You're going to breathe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Guarantee you. So I was praying my round in my usual, my usual way in the kingdom of the supreme fiat, and I arrived at the point of what the divine will had done in the holy humanity of our Lord, and I looked at his tears, his sighs, his moans, and everything Jesus did, invested with the light of his divine will. Had I, Jesus, she says, come upon the earth to redeem mankind, one drop of my blood, one little pain of mine could have been enough to put humanity back in safety. But since I came out not only to save humanity, but to give him back my divine will that Adam had lost, this divine will wanted to descend into all my pains, into all my tears, into all my sighs, all my moans, into everything and I, that I did and suffered in order to reacquire the dominion in all, uh, in all and over all human acts. And therefore, 
to be able to form once again its kingdom in the midst of creatures. So as a little child, when I cried, I wailed a moan. My divine will, more than a solar ray, invested all creation with my tears, with my moans, with my sighs. Oh, if you only knew the assault that the divine majesty received in hearing my crying, my moans, my sighs, sighs in all of creation. All created things, animated by my divine will, prostrated at the foot of the divine throne, deafened it with their moans and drew it with their tears, moved it to pity for their, with their sighs and their prayers, and my pains reverberating in them, bound it to surrender the keys of heaven. Who did God give the keys of heaven to? The Pope. Don't worry about a thing. And implored that the kingdom of my divine will will come upon earth once again. My celestial father moved to compassion and tenderness by his own divine will that cried, that moaned, that prayed, that suffered in all of his works, surrendered the keys and gave his kingdom once again to back to humanity through the Holy Church. But in order to be sure, he placed it in my holy humanity so that at the opportune, uh, at the opportunity, Appropriate time, sorry, there goes my, there goes my, okay. He might give it back to humanity, the human family again. Here's the necessity for me to do the human actions to descend in order to the human, in the order of human actions, because my divine will was to take its dominion and substitute the order of its divine will in all the acts of all of humanity. Jesus repaired and redid everything. You have to remember this substituted the order of its divine will in all the acts of humanity. See then how much this kingdom cost me, with how many pains I, Jesus, ransomed it. And this is why I love, the, love it so much, I want to establish it in the midst of humanity at any cost. Creation was made for Adam. In it, he was to be the king of all created things. We're supposed to be kings. We're supposed to be queens of the earth. And what have, we, what have we done? We've fallen so, so far that the earth attacks us. We've got to get back to being what God has created us to be. In it, Adam was to be the king of all created things, but by withdrawing from my divine will, Adam lost the regime, the dominion, and it, nor could he form the laws of the kingdom of creation, as it is usual with a king when he possesses a kingdom. In fact, having lost the unity of the light of my divine will, he was no longer able to rule. He had no more strength of dominion. His laws had no value. Creation was for him like a people that rebels against the king and makes of him a laughing stock. Let's just, just look, look at the commercials. This is sickening. It's laughable that humans have fallen so low. And this is why my holy humanity was immediately recognized by the whole of creation as its king, because it felt in me, Jesus, the strength and the union of one single will with the Father and the Holy Spirit. But since I departed, it remained without a king again, enclosed in its silence, waiting again for someone who, in the kingdom of my divine will, would admit his voice to let it resound in it. But do you know who she is? See, that Jesus is asking us, who shall put all creation in feast once again? Jesus and Mary redeemed us. Who is the human born of original sin that's going to put all of creation in feast once again? The one who shall form its echo, shall render it speaking again. It is you, Louisa, my daughter, who shall take back the dominion, the regime, the kingdom of my divine will. Therefore, Louisa, be attentive, and let your flight in my volition be continuous. Volume 19, 8, 12, 19, 26. Now, in order to form its kingdom in the most innermost place of the soul, my will wants to find these three powers, the intellect, memory, and will, given to humanity to raise the soul to the likeness of her God in order with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. My will would not go out of its dominion if these three powers, the intellect, the memory, and the will of the soul were not in order. Its reignings would be happy as though natural because of her three powers, being in order with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
the creature would have order within herself and outside of herself and the kingdom of my divine will the will of God and that of the creature would not be a divided kingdom but a single one going back to that prime act of God therefore its dominion and regime would be one more so since my divine will does not know how to reign where there is no order or harmony inseparable qualities indispensable properties of the divine person this is order and harmony and if the soul can never be ordered and never harmonize with her creator if she does not have the three powers your intellect memory and will to open to receive from God his divine qualities that's the sixth step on the sixth day when you read the Virgin Mary in the kingdom the three powers are going to open to receive from God God's divine qualities you're going to become God's divine masterpiece that's Jesus's promise ordered and his property properties harmonized in such a way that finding the divine harmonies and the supreme order of the divine kingdom and of the human kingdom my divine will will make them one and reign in it with its full dominion again this is the this is the most glorious time to be alive and the evil one is so furious he's trying to kill everybody he doesn't want humanity to receive this but God is going to win our hope is in him the final devotion Jesus says I give to my church before I return is divine mercy Jesus I trust in you I hope in you I have confidence in you 519 822 1926 Louisa says I thought to myself if living in the supreme kingdom of the divine will requires so much attention so many sacrifices very few shall be those who shall want to live in the kingdom so holy and my sweet Jesus coming back told me my daughter Louisa the one who is called to be head of a mission must not only now we say <laughs> so here Jesus is bringing back Louisa to reality Louisa you're the head of this your mission not only number one embrace everyone but number two you must rule everyone number three you must dominate everyone number four you must constitute uh, uh, your yourself the life of each of them I mean he's saying Louisa yeah you have the power that I'm going to breathe into you to bring all of humanity back will be more than the power I breathed into Adam you're the firstborn of the divine will you're the newborn of the divine will a new beginning is coming for all of humanity because of what I'm going to do with you Louisa you are a true daughter of Mary you are a true da daughter of Jesus the new Adam and the new Eve there is such a distance between Louisa and the one who is the head of a mission and one who must be a member that the head can be compared to the sun and the member to a little matchstick this is why I have told you many times Louisa that your mission is great who is this Louisa because this is not about mere personal sanctity but about number one embracing everything and everyone like Adam was supposed to preparing the kingdom of my divine will for all the future human generations my daughter Louisa there is nothing more penetrating than light and my divine will is more than light it diffuses everywhere it brings the good it contains to everyone it acts the acts done in the divine will form the atmosphere of gold and silver that has the virtue of emptying all darkness of the night of the human will so he's saying you've got to begin to live without worry fear anxiety complaints negativity and sin like I said before worry is a demon oh I got to worry about my family well then spend your time getting a heart attack spend your time getting a stroke spend your time you know having an ulcer it's your your whole your whole body is saying you're not in charge of this give it to God let God be the Lord I mean it's really true it, the darkness of, of negativity no 
This is what Jesus is saying to us. No more negativity. Don't think of anything negative. Think of the positive. Negative produces negative. Positive produces positive. Get out of the negative. Get out of worry. Get out of fear. Get out of anxieties. Get out of complaints. Get out of negativity. How many times do I read, and this is happening, and this is happening, and this? Stop it. Jesus is our Lord. He's our Savior. He's our Master. He's our King. He's our God. He wants us to enter into his life, not the evil one's life. Stop it. No more negativity. Be positive. That, that's what Jesus is saying to Louisa. The virtue of the divine will will empty all the darkness of the night of the misery of the human will. Now listen to this. And with its beneficial light, it will bring the kiss of the eternal volition. This kiss, you have to understand, the ring that you bought, the, the ring, the wedding ring that you bought, Jesus has proposed to us. And we have accepted his proposal. And he says about heaven, this is the wedding feast that we're going to. Why are, is there any negativity in us? The king is coming to receive his bride. Jesus is he's looking at us. Who is peaceful? Who is happy? Who is joyful? Jesus says, is anticipating heaven. Enough of, the, enough of the misery. That's what Jesus is saying. It's going to bring you the kiss of the eternal volition. It's going to dispose souls to wanting to come, who want to come into the kingdom of the supreme fiat. God is getting us ready for this. Louisa, each act of yours is done in the divine will. In a, it is a new horizon that has never been seen before. That makes you arise for the eye of the human intellect so we can see things from a divine perspective. To make it long for the light of the good that my most holy divine will possesses. Louisa, my daughter, in order to prepare this kingdom, it takes work. It takes celestial laws that are laws all of love. Laws of fears, laws of penalties, laws of condemnations do not enter into the kingdom because the law of love is my will. Remember, my commandment to you is love one another. Because the laws of love of my divine will shall be friendly, filial, reciprocal love between God and man. Therefore, fear and condemnations have neither force nor life. Stop it. And that this is, you, might, you know, your mother's always said this. If you can't say anything nice about them, don't say anything at all. We, we, we got to get back on track. There's negati negativity all around us. Our job is, like I said, on the phone, fiat, everything will be okay. God's going to take care of it. But you don't understand my misery. I want to give you my misery. You're not going to give me your misery. God's going to take care of it. Well, I can't talk to you anymore. <laughs> Misery loves company. Again, don't be trapped. Uh, I've got to be good. I've got to sit and listen to this. No. Stop it. That's all you have to say to the person. First to yourself, stop it. And then to them, stop it. God's going to take care of it. Do you trust in Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? Is he your Lord and Savior? I mean, really, it's going to be good. So he says very, very clearly, Therefore, fears and condemnations shall have neither force nor life. If there shall be some suffering, it shall be full of triumph and glory. That's why when you stub your toe, say, Thank you, Jesus. No, no other words. So here's, here's Jesus, what Jesus is saying to us today. Be attentive, because this is about making known a celestial kingdom to yourself. 
your family doesn't want to hear about it. You're going to be joyful, peaceful, and happy, and they're going to go, you're nuts. Don't you know what's going on? Don't you know what's happening? No, no, really, it's true. Make known a celestial kingdom to yourself. And you look at them and you go, why are you worried? Jesus is going to take care of it. Don't you know that God helps those who help themselves? And you say, don't you know that was written by Benjamin Franklin? <laughs> it's true. He... Okay, so making known the celestial kingdom to ourselves. Manifesting its secrets to ourselves. That's why I love reading the book of heaven. Every day, Jesus is teaching me something new. And it's beautiful. And it's him and I. It's, it's Jesus, or Luis said, the secret of living in the divine will is live on earth if it's only you and Jesus alone. You're always talking to him. You're always, you're always in everything. What are we going to do today, Lord? What would you like to have for lunch? You know, it's, it's all, you're always talking to Jesus. Manifesting its secrets, its prerogatives, its goods, to draw souls to love it. People are going to say, why are you so happy? I love Jesus. Well, I love Jesus too. No, you don't. If you're reading the book of heaven, you'll fall in love with Jesus. Well, well I don't have the book. I, I, I remember one, one theologian said to me in, at the Vatican, how many books does Luis have? He's got shot 36 volumes. I haven't got time for that. Who has time for that? I said, I do. I, it's great. You just got to start reading. It's wonderful. Draw souls to love it. And again, how do, you, how do you draw a soul? Find a soul who loves Our Lady. Find a soul who prays the rosary, wears the scapular. Find a soul that attends Holy Mass. Find a soul that goes to confession. Then you have someone who is obedient, who's faithful. If you see a little lump on their back, you know that they're wearing a scapular. And then say, you know, here's something I'd like to share with you. Again, they're out, everybody's out there, and God is saying to you, draw these souls who are already faithful, already obedient. Long for it and take possession of it. Now, this is, this is very, very important. Um, everybody's got a blue sheet. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, God bless you. And remember, Jesus is here. Uh, please thank him for what he's done, uh, what, what he's planned for you uh, with, with the wedding ring, with the, the becoming oblates, with uh, anything else. Okay. Huh? Okay. Okay, here, one, one more thing. Uh, this is for the new people and the old people. Uh, the teachings should be basically from your priest. Uh, you, you go to the YouTube, Luisa, I mean, excuse, excuse me, Fiat Luisa. Just go to Fiat Luisa. Listen to the teachings. It'll help you enter into this. It's very simple. It's very beautiful. Uh, ask your pastor, ask your priest if they could help you. Uh, if they say no, just say thank you. Don't worry about it. God, God's got a priest for you. Uh, the recommended books are Hours of the Passion, The Virgin Mary and the Kingdom, uh, The Introduction to the Divine Will, uh, the, the book the, the, from the Vatican, and uh, The Son of My Divine Will. Uh, that, that is really, that's unheard of, the, Va the Vatican writing about someone who is not a saint, who is not a blessed. They, they know Louisa, and... Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's glorious to read this. Also, the, the DVD, Dawn of a Mystery. Um, if you haven't seen the Dawn of a Mystery, listen to Archbishop uh, Picari as he tells us how beautiful this is and, and how to get into it. The, the books, books are free online at luisapicaretta.me. Uh, if you have a dream or voice dream app, uh, you can uh, import all the PDF files to your phone or your computer, and you can listen to them. A lot of people listen to uh, the vo on VoiceStream, uh, uh, that app, I think it's $9, $10, something like that, um, where they read to you, and, and you're listening to the divine will. It's, 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 
It's great. Uh, order from Black Printing. Uh, the order forms are in the book room. Um, a simple website that you can daily post is uh, servantofgodluisapicaretta.com. And, and, and it's, this is, it might seem complicated, um, but it's not. It's, it, becomes, it becomes very simple, very beautiful, where uh, you're always happy. And if you're not happy, you're not reading. If you're reading, you'll always be happy. So God bless you, and, and just know we're going to have mass. To, what time is it? What, anybody got the time? Uh, maybe, maybe one loud voice. Time? <laughs> 15. Okay. All right, so in 45 minutes we'll have mass. Again, remember Jesus is present, and, and talk to him. You know, fall in love with Jesus. This is the main thing. Okay, God bless you. And just keep on, keep on uh, praying and, and read, read, read.